This is Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Now from the Collins Aerospace Studio at the Nordloff Center in downtown Rockford, here's your host, Eric Wilson. We're, we're at the Nordloff Center. Uh, it's center stage here at the Nordloff Center, thanks to our friends at Rockford Public Library, Collins Aerospace. If you can't tell, we're in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> We're excited to be here, they're excited to be here, we're excited you are here for the finale of season eight of Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. It seems like we just started this tournament not too long ago, um, we've had some fantastic gameplay for the last 30 weeks or so, and we're basically in the same spot that we were last year for the finale. Auburn and Belvedere North are facing off again for state line supremacy, we like to call it. A uh, little bit about our teams. Auburn Knights are looking for another piece of hardware. It's kind of a position they're used to being in. Seven seasons, seven titles here on Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl for them. But if there was ever a team that could knock them off the top, it would be the Belvedere North Blue Thunder. A little bit of history between these teams. This is the, the teams. This is the third time that they have faced each other on Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Um, all of those times have happened in the finale. The previous two games, Auburn won by 70 points. And that's the closest any team, it's happened a couple of other times, but that's the closest that any team has ever come to beating Auburn. Um, and that may not seem like a lot, or that maybe 70 points seems like a lot to you, but when you look at the points in our final round, it's basically a four question swing. That's it. That shows how important every question is in this game. Uh, before we get to the game, we have some fun things that we kind of like to do here on our finale. Um, I will introduce you to a Quiz Bowl alum who is back here in the state line, which is what we like to hear. Part of the reason for this show, right, is to make sure that our talented young people, not only do we show them off, but they're also encouraged to stay here in the state line. Uh, we get to check out a very cool job that he has. And I catch up with a fellow quiz show host and find out that uh, we have a lot in common, not just in our jobs, but maybe a little bit personally as well. So we're gonna take a quick break and come back with our preview half hour or so of our Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl finale. We'll see you in about two minutes. Welcome back to our Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl finale for season eight. I hope you are as excited as our audience here is. Uh, if you're a fan of Quiz Bowl, you may have noticed that it's been a long time since we have not had a Larson brother playing for Belvedere. That will be different this season, this upcoming season, because Jack just graduated. Before that, brothers Nick and Larry worked together as a team to put up some serious points playing for Belvedere for the Bucks. Larry just graduated from college and he had a job lined up even before he had his college diploma in hand. So grab your peanuts and Cracker Jack for a quick trip north of the state line. From ABC Supply Stadium in Beloit, Wisconsin, it's almost time for Beloit Sky Car Baseball. Today it's Education Day in Beloit as we get set for a Wednesday matinee between the Beloit Sky Carp and the Cedar Rapids Colonels. It's game two of six between these Midwest League West rivals. All right, we are here in your office. This has to be one of the coolest offices yes. I've ever been in. And this is a loaded question. You could probably talk 20 minutes about this. How did you become the play-by-play -play guy for the Sky Carp? How did this how did this happen? It was very unique to say the least, and it was it felt something out of a fever dream. So basically what it was, it, there was this broadcast symposium here in Beloit that they set up to be held in 2021 in January. I signed up for it as soon as they came out with it. And uh, the big big names on there, Joe Davis specifically, he went to Beloit College. Now he's the voice of the World Series on Fox and I thought like that's my guy, like I stay up late all the time to listen to the Dodgers games on TV because of him. And so I sent in my tape and I got picked as a finalist. They announced that at the symposium on Saturday and then on Sunday what they did was they had us all in this booth, seven finalists, and you called the half inning of the 2016 World Series off of a monitor. I went first, I called the bottom of the first inning game one of the 2016 World Series. I thought I did okay. I was like, okay, maybe I'll finish top three. And then at the end of the day, they announced who won the contest. Uh, Joe Davis announced it, said I won. And that's a pretty crazy way to find out you got your first job out of college is the voice of MLB on Fox. Yeah, the voice you. of the World Series basically yeah. tells you, hey, congratulations, kid, you got a job. Exactly. It's, it was 
crazy. That's it felt awesome. like a dream, so. So let's rewind a few years. From Belvedere, you went to Bradley? Yes, sir. Why'd you pick Bradley specifically? They had a sports communication program named program, named after Charlie Steiner, who's one of the Dodgers radio broadcasters. I saw the opportunities they had. One of my best friends, Joey Wright, also wants to do play-by-play. -play. We created a business called Clutch Sports Media, where we broadcasted high school sports just out on our own. That started our sophomore year. It kind of blew up into this bigger thing than we really expected, but. So you all, did you always want to be a sports broadcaster, like during your years in Belvedere? I grew up listening to Pat Hughes and Ron Santo on Cubs radio with my dad. And that's kind of how that started. You know, I was a dedicated listener as soon as I was six years old or so. So at Belvedere, I had a chance to be on our weekly video announcements. When I was a sports anchor for three years, that's kind of what got me started. I only called one game of play-by-play -play in high school, but for some reason I decided I could do it in college and it worked out. Why not? Yeah. How long did you do quiz ball? Uh, it was, I think I joined my junior year uh, because my brother picked it up, Nick. He picked it up his freshman year, got really into it his sophomore year. My mom's like, hey, you should do this. You know, they need people. And I really enjoyed it just because in high school I wasn't able to be on camera a lot. And, you know, anytime you know, anytime you're on camera, it helps with the comfortability factor of being on the air. So even though Quiz Bowl, I'd buzz in maybe once or twice every round. That helped in a, in a small way. And I will say my favorite class of bowl memory was my last match with my brother. It was the lightning round category where uh, you pick a category and you answer 10 questions. And we got the World Series. Me and my brother were, were hoping for a category about baseball the entire season. And we finally got one on the last round that we had and we swept it and it was awesome. Red Sox? Correct, that's the category, 10 points. Just for the record, we didn't plan that. We had no idea. Yes. We had no idea the Larson boys were wishing for the World Series category or sports or baseball in general. Yes. But it's nice that it worked out that way for you. And it's super cool you got to do it with your brother. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm the oldest of three. And then it goes Nicholas and then Jack, who is on Belvedere right now and has been on episodes this season. He got a big kick out of when you called him Big J. He still talks about <laughs> that. Uh, but yeah, it's it's quite the lineage, I guess. And Nicholas really set the tone for that. Uh, he was really into it and grinded hard to make Belvedere a competitive team. So I was glad I was able to be a part of it for a little bit. Well, so what, describe your job here. What's it like? You talked a little bit about it with me before we started the interview, but it's not just play-by-play -play during game time, you know, three hours of a baseball game, right? Talk about your job. A typical day in the life kind of looks like, you know, you show up to the office at 9 a.m. and I work on a game notes packet that details all the little details about our team. So stats, but also um, kind of stories that describe the stats, uh, little notes about yesterday's game, notes about trends that the team's going through, notes about players, small bios, and then specifically notes about the starting pitcher. And then I'll spend another hour and a half, two hours prepping on my own notes for my computer, specifically about the other team. Compile that into my computer so I've got that for reference during the game. Finding unique ways to tell stories, finding unique stories can be difficult sometimes, but I'm lucky that I work with a great team that is kind of opened up. So much fun to catch up with Larry. At, he makes it look so easy. We sat there and watched him for a little bit of the broadcast and really he makes it and, and it's easy to forget that he is fresh out of college and sounding very professional. Nice job. And if you haven't been up to ABC Supply Stadium, that was my first trip up there. Absolutely gorgeous place. Uh, check it out if you can. Up next from NBC page to host of two network television shows. We chase down someone with a competitive nature. Who, whose competitive nature fits her new job title. ABC's popular game show, The Chase, actually just kicked off its third season. If you're not familiar with the game, uh, contestants team up to test their knowledge against trivia experts like uh, Jeopardy greats uh, Ken Jennings, James Holtzauer, Brad Rutter. Sarah Haynes is the host. That's not her only job. She's actually also one of the co-hosts of The View. This fall, Sarah actually stopped by the Rock Valley College class that I teach virtually. We used Zoom. And we both discovered that we actually have uh, our, our jobs and our personalities both have a lot of things in common. I'm addicted to games and game shows. So to have been a part of one and have literally a front row seat to the excitement and kind of the off-camera moments, and um, it, it's been such an amazing ride. Did you ever see yourself becoming a game show host? Okay, 
So no, oh, I, but I'm going to settle in because this sounds like you've got a good story in. coming. So <laughs> when I, when I worked with Michael Strahan, he had him uh, invited me like he does for a lot of people to come on pyramid. And I take a game show. I take a game really seriously. Like, so I prepped, practiced, trained for that job. I, I, there was like, if you've ever seen Ace Ventura's laces up moment, like there was a moment where I got a question wrong that I couldn't let go of. And so for maybe six weeks, when we got back to work, I kept bringing up how I would have done it differently. How, what would this have worked? What do you think? And Michael was like, let it go, Sarah. Seriously, <laughs> let it go. So the next time I get asked to come back, which was last some, 20, summer of 2020, I, the producer, probably as a courtesy said, if you want to practice at all, here's my number. I called him every day. We trained, we trained, we trained. I printed out practice tests. I really took it seriously and did a good job. And I always thought, you know, how lucky is Michael that he gets to call this a job? Every scenario, every winning winner's circle, every moment, he gets to kind of play along and it's an awesome game. And he gets paid to do that. What, I mean, what a joke, like in the best way, like what, a, I need that <laughs> Never thinking, because I'm not a Michael Strahan, that a show would come along that I'd get a chance like that. I mean, and so I, it's a bit pinch me that like I get to be a part of this, especially because now I hang out with really smart friends. When I sit and have a drink or a meal with Ken or James, Brad, a lot of times we'll sit together. I'm like, you guys, I'm definitely not the smartest one in this group. <laughs> <laughs> it's humbling, I imagine, right? Humbling, but it also, I always, smart kids, and, and that's why quiz and trivia are so impressive to me. I always thought that was so beautiful. I surrounded myself by smart people my whole life because I thought, if you're smart, you'll put smart people around you because all of that lifts you, you know, like it always is better for you too. And so to be in a, in a trivia show with Jeopardy greats is like, who got the lottery now? <laughs> How much prep does, does it go into um, you getting ready for an episode of The Chase? I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of pronunciations there. There's a lot of fast moving. How much prep do you do before an episode? So there's only a, a, a limited amount of time I can get my hands on the questions due to legal and standards because they they protect that like the diamonds at an Oscar show like they follow you around like there's they are really tight on that so I get them as early as I can and sometimes that can be so what they can, the earliest I'll get is the night before I can get a, a three packets but only one will be used so because I'm a Virgo, I prep three packets. <laughs> so I stay up and I not only read them out loud to myself to make sure I'm doing that, but I tend to learn better as a student when I understand what I'm asking or I know the answer or I could add color to a response. So I try to internalize the things I don't, I'm not gonna know all of it, but like if there's an interesting question that I'm like, wow, I wonder how that came to be or wouldn't it be funny if I knew, and then I look it up. So I end up doing not only pronunciation and practicing and what it looks like, I often dive deeper to kind of internalize it. Do you have any favorite moments? Some of them I don't, rem like they, it may not have aired the way I'm remembering it, but I mean, didn't air the way I remember it, but I got hung up on a word and it's so silly, but you know, when you read something and you're reading it and you say it and you say it wrong, but each time you read it, you continue to say it wrong because the way you're internalizing it visually is not how it should come out audibly. The word was eponymous, E-P-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S. I could not say that to save my life. So every time they'd have me keep re-recording because they had to do an audio thing. So I say it wrong during the show and we do the pickups, which are if there's a, a word like I crash and burn on, I don't even know how I said it. And I'm not even gonna put that back into my head. I got so mad because it's happening in front of Brad Rudder was uh, the chaser that time. And he's sitting up there. I, I, I don't like, I would never swear at work. Like I, I swear behind closed doors and I can hear my parents being like, use your smart words. Like, what are you doing? Like, and, but I would never on a mic on a set in a big thing, you know, there are tons of people watching. I dropped an F bomb. Like I was so furious that I started to feel myself shake. I had to record that probably 15 times every time I looked, cause it was speed. I couldn't spit out the word eponymous. So now the chasers tease me and they'll drop eponymous into any story they have just to get me for that one word. And it's it's very triggering. I'm not over it yet, but I will never forget what that means, how to spell it, how to say it. It's it's in here now. 
um, I want I, I know I've taken a lot of your time. I just want to ask one more question. Do you have any yeah. advice for some of our, our players? The biggest thing I can always say is when they get out of school, life isn't going to have the same formula it had when you were matriculating. It's not as clear what your line or your lane is. If you always make sure that you enjoy where you're at, the result will always be a bonus. It'll always be extra. I say it's like the frosting. If you find tasks, things, challenges that you're not waiting on a destination, you actually love what you're doing, you will always win. Such great advice. Sarah, Sarah was so gracious. I mean, you see, you can, you can imagine how busy her schedule was and she spent easily a half an hour with us that day. So it was great and it was, it was so interesting to hear about her job. Uh, a little bit like Sarah, I honestly, I never thought I would ever be a game show host, but yet here we are. Little known fact, I was in my past a game show contestant, and I think we have some proof of that. <laughs> yep. Um, I was on Wheel of Fortune for 18 week. I was 16 years old. I'm the guy on the right there, by the way, in case you're not sure. The guy on the left is Pat Sajak. Uh, there's my sweet 80s mullet and uh, my Miami Vice look. Um, I was 16, I won't tell you how long ago that was, and there I am actually waving to my mom. Um, I won't tell you how long ago it was, but raise your hand if you remember when on that game you actually bought prizes after you won a round. So that's how long ago it was. There I am buying some prizes, and that $698 scooter, I actually won. So I tooled around on that for a little bit before I went to college. Uh, the episodes are actually recorded in Hollywood. It was a super cool experience for me. Um, I was out there staying with some relatives. Um, so those are my two cousins. And then all the way on the right there is my little brother. Again, Miami Vice look there with the, the white pants and the pink shirt. Um, my mom was stuck back home in the Chicago suburbs, so she really didn't get to go and see, so she didn't get to experience that the way we all did, um, but she's here tonight. And so I'm pretty excited to introduce everybody to my mom. Mom, wave. Nobody, nobody on television can see. So instead of getting to see me as a game show contestant, you get to see me as a game show host. So. I hope that's sort of a consolation prize. <laughs> See what I did there, Mom? Consolation prize. I get all my terrible jokes from my mother, just so you know. Um, but I really, no, I'm glad you're here, Mom. Love you, and I hope you enjoy this show. Speaking of this show, shall we get into the season eight finale of Bertram State Line Quiz Bowl? Yes. I am bound by contract to do what the audience tells me to do, and they seem pretty excited. Let's take a quick break, and we'll get into it. Auburn versus Belvedere North. The season eight finale begins right after this. I didn't interrupt the applause because our contestants deserve that recognition. They have worked over the last, what, eight months or so playing our game 30 weeks-ish to be here for the finale, and th this is where we end up with these two teams left in Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. We're about to crown a champion for season eight. Will it be the Auburn Knights? Let's welcome them to the stage. <laughs> Senesio is their captain. You may have seen Senesio this week on Good Day State Line with me, answering some serious questions, but also some pop culture. You did solid on those, Senesio. Uh, Senesio is the captain. Introduce us to your starting lineup. Uh, to my far right is Kobe, to my near right is Alex, and to my near left is Luis. Auburn got here by beating the Belvedere Bucks in our final four on the strength of Alex's nine buzz-ins. Solid performance there in Alex. They are looking for their eighth straight championship, but the Belvedere North Blue Thunder may have something to say about that. Let's welcome them. North made it here by beating eventual consolation champs, Keith Country Day. Um, I mentioned Alex's nine correct buzz-ins. Scotty led the Blue Thunder with eight. Pretty solid for you as well. Scotty is also the captain. Introduce us to your starting lineup. I'm Scotty. On my left is Spencer. On my close right is James. And on my far right is Billy. We've met the teams. Let's get to some questions. Good luck to both of our teams. Uh, normally, I give the two most important rules. There's three today. Number one, wait for me to call your name before you give an answer. Number two, say your answer loudly and clearly. Number three, have some fun. All right? Everybody take a deep breath. 
Let's get into our buzzing round as we begin our championship game, season eight, Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Hands on your buzzers. Good luck, teams. Here we go. Muggle technology fascinates what ministry of magic and Luis. Dumbledore. Incorrect. I'll finish for Belvedere North. Ministry of Magic employee who is married to Molly that is the father of the seven Weasley children, including Ron. Spencer. Donald Weasley. Say that again. Donald. Incorrect. Arthur Weasley. Spoiler alert, he's also Harry Potter's father-in-law. What team, which acquired first baseman Rowdy Tellez in July 2021, employed 2021 NL Cy Young winner Corbin Burns and plays home games in Wisconsin. Billy. Milwaukee Brewers. That's correct. Belvedere, Belvedere North gets the first points of the game. Maybe we got our sports question out of the way. Who knows? What fort, the objective of a relief attempt by the steamship Star of the West in January 1861, was where the first shots, Spencer. Fort Sumter. That is correct. First shots of the Civil War were fired. That is Fort Sumter. You're up to 20 now. What Paramount Network series about the Dutton family of ranchers, James? Uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone is correct. Three in a row, starring Kevin Costner, shares its name with the National Park in Montana and Wyoming. What man, whose February 1965 murder in Manhattan was the subject of two November 2021 exonerations and was once a spokesman for the Nation of Islam? James. Malcolm X. Malcolm X is correct. St. Joseph, Missouri, and Sacramento, California were the end points of what mail service that operated, Luis? Pony Express. That is correct. Operated from 1860 to 1861, Auburn's first points of the game. What novel, the first to be published by Toni Morrison, is titled for a facial feature that, Senecio? The Bluest Eye. Correct. Desired by the protagonist, Piccola Breedlove. What object, which follows an apparent path known as the ecliptic, is a G2V star located 93 million miles, or one astronomical, Scotty? The sun. That is correct, one astronomical unit from Earth. Lin-Manuel Miranda directed what 2021 Spencer? Encanto. Incorrect, I will finish for Auburn. 2021 musical film starring Andrew Garfield as Jonathan Larson. Tick, tick, boom. You can watch that on Netflix. What mountain, which was first climbed by Edwin James in 1820, is about 12 miles west of Colorado Springs and is named for Spencer? Pike's Peak. Correct. The 19th century explorer Zebulon Pike. A cloak-like covering called a mantle is found in what animal phylum, whose members include gastropods and cephalopods? Senecio. Mollusca. That is correct. Mollusca or mollusks. What 1886 novel depicting the murder of Colin Campbell was written by Robert Louis Stevenson and has a title referring to David Balfour's abduction? Kobe. Kidnapped. Kidnapped is correct. That would be the abduction. In 2021, what country condemned its eastern neighbor Belarus? Spencer. Poland. That is correct, for provoking a border crisis by helping Middle East refugees enter the European Union. Polynomials of what degree, whose depressed form was first solved by Girolamo Cardano, Luis? Two. Incorrect, I will finish for Belvedere North. Have one more root than quadratics and are called cubics. Spencer. Third degree. Third degree is correct. And that's all we have time for this round. Off to a strong start. Belvedere North already has 80 points on the board. It's 40 for Auburn. There's a lot of game left to play. Three more rounds. Our next one is called Volleyball, and it's up after this break. After a very strong run to start our game, Belvedere North is on top of Auburn, 80 points to 40. We'll get to our volleyball in just a second, but first, a very special thank you to Andrew Hall. He's the Senior Manager of Human Resources at Bergstrom. He's also our judge today, quite possibly, depending on the day, one of the toughest jobs in the room because he has to make sure I don't screw things up. All right, because of the coin flip, our first volleyball question will go to Auburn. I won't go over the rules too much with you guys. You've been playing this game long enough. I will just fire these questions off to you and we'll 
get through as many as we can before we run out of time for the round. Sinesti, are you ready for your first volleyball question? Here we go. What 1965 novel in which cave dwellings called Sieches are inhabited by Freeman centers on young Paul Atreides and is by Frank Herbert? Dune. Yes, you knew that halfway through the question. I could tell. Those are the first points of the round. We're over to Belvedere North for your first question. What man called the Lion of the Senate opposed Jimmy Carter in a 1980 Democratic primary and was the younger brother of an assassinated president? Bobby Kennedy. Here. Here. Bobby Kennedy. Uh, you'd be more specific? Robert. Bob. Incorrect. Teddy Kennedy. Back over to Auburn. What word used in the book of Judges to separate Ephraimites from Gileadites refers to a phrase distinguishing members of a group from outsiders? Nomenclature? Incorrect. Book of Judges may be, have been a clue that we were looking for a Bible term, shibboleth. No points. Back to North. What two countries were party to the 1904 Entente Cordiale, which, among other things, acknowledged their respective influences in Morocco and Egypt? Britain and France. That is correct. Had to make sure that Britain was acceptable. We've got it. You're in. Those are your 10. We're over now to Auburn again. What metal found in a mineral azurite is a good conductor of heat and electricity, once widely used in pots and wiring, that has a reddish color? Copper. Yep. And that one's another one. Seemed like you knew very quickly. Back to North. Neolithic passage tombs, such as Noth and Newgrange, can be found in what present-day country whose high kings were crowned on the hill of Tara? Iran. Incorrect. Also known as the Emerald Isle, we needed Ireland for that question. Back to Auburn. In what country did a crisis over Angel Salingi investments lead to the November 2021 ascent of Prime Minister Nicolae Ciuca, who leads in Bucharest? Romania. Romania. That is correct. Bucharest probably was the big clue there. Back-to-back -back Europe questions, and we are back over to North. What arrangement of two equal and opposite charges separated by a tiny distance is the namesake of a moment possessed by polar molecules? Dipole. Dipole. That's correct. Back over to Auburn. What is the home country of the 21st century memoirist Karl Ove Nausgaard and the realist playwright of Peer Gint and Hedda Gobbler, Henrik Ibsen? Norway. That is correct. Back to North. What U.S. general designed a war of attrition against communist forces while leading American troops in Vietnam from 1964 to 1968? Bradley. Bradley. Incorrect. Westmoreland. William Westmoreland. And we end the round with the no points there. Armour closed the gap a little bit. Now there's only 20 points separating our two teams. Belvedere North made it to triple digits. They are at 100. It's 100 to 80. But our next round could change those scores very quickly. Our contestants know that. It's the Nika IBEW Lightning Round. But first, you get to play at home with a Bergstrom bonus question, and we'll be back with the answer. 36 years after taking his ride into the danger zone, which Academy Award-winning actor is back on the big screen as everyone's favorite Top Gun? Halfway through our game, and we're not sure if those applause are actually for the score that we see or the fact that this next question is worth pizza and pasta from our friends at Lino's of Rockford. It's the Bergstrom bonus question, contestants. So hands on your buzz buzzers. Uh, if you're watching at home, you already saw this question. Our contestants have not. Let me know if you know the answer to this. If you do, you get a pizza party for uh, your team from Lino's. Here we go. 36 years after taking his first ride into the danger zone, which Academy Award winning actor, Spencer? Tom Cruise. That is correct. Back at the big screen. Spencer, you can be my wingman anytime. Do you get the reference? And actually, I'm also surprised that the pilots, James and Scotty, didn't get that. Um, and uh, just, uh, actually, I want to take this time really quickly to thank um, our friends at Lino's and Charlie and the, the Lino's family because halfway through our season, we asked them to be a part of the Bergstrom bonus question. Um, without hesitation, uh, Charlie said yes. So we want to thank Linos for being a part of that and jumping on board. All right, let's get into our gameplay. The Nika IBEW Lightning Round will change these scores very, very quickly. We all know that. 
Belvedere North won the coin flip. Now Auburn's been chiseling away at North's lead. It's down to 20 points. But if you run one of these categories, it will get you 100 added to your score. Scotty, you get first pick. So these are your three categories this week. Hundreds, literary villains, or European bridges. Hundreds. You got it. Give these answers related to the number 100. And just to be clear, none of these answers refer to how old I am. I just want to be, we'll get that out up front. Um, 60 seconds to go through these 10. Again, if you run it, it's 100 points. Edit to your score, you'll be up to 200. And then Senesio, you'll have 30 seconds to get to whatever they don't. Advice to both teams, you can pass. Scotty, are you ready for your first one? Give these answers related to the number 100. A US dollar equals 100 of these coins. Pennies. Correct. A century has 100 of these. Years. Years. Correct. House of Congress with 100 members. Senate. Correct. Metric prefix for 100. Centi. Incorrect. No. Magazine no. that recognizes the 100 most influential people. Time. Time. Correct. Between the end zones, an NFL football field is 100 of these units long. Yards. Yards. Correct. Dante's Divine Comedy has 100 of these parts. Chapters. Chapters. Incorrect. In Greek myth, a hecatankery had 100 of these body parts. Pass. Pass. In the US, a standard stock option is for 100 of these things. Pass. Pass. Element whose atoms have exactly 100 protons. Pass. In Greek myth, a hecatonkery had 100 of these body parts. Arms. Arms. Yes, right before the buzzer. We will take that. 10 more points added to your score there. You're up to 160. Senesio, that leaves four for you. You've got 30 seconds, though, to get through them. Take all the time if you need, or you can blaze through them if you're paying attention. It may not even take you to 30. Are you ready? Na give these answers related to the number 100. Here we go. Dante's Divine Comedy had 100 of these parts. Cantos. That's correct. In the US, a standard stock option is for 100 of these things. Shares. That's correct. Element whose atoms have exactly 100 protons. Organicine. Incorrect. Metric prefix for 100. Cent. Incorrect. So the only two no one got were the metric prefix for 100, which was hecto. Centi is one one hundredth. Hecto is for one hundred. And the element whose atoms have exactly one hundred protons was fermium. Also has atomic number one hundred. So now it's a sixty point game, but Auburn, you have a chance to close that gap really quickly. All you need to do is run a category, and here are the two that are left. Literary villains and European bridges. Literary villains. All right, we'll leave the bridges to the wayside. Name the literary works that contain these villains. So I give you the villain, you give me the literary work. Same rules apply, 60 seconds. If you run the category, you get 100 points added to your score. That'll bring you to 200. You ready, Senesio? Yep. Here is your first one. Remember, again, advice to both teams. You can't pass if the clock is ticking. Here we go. Name the literary works that contain these villains. The Wicked Witch of the West. Uh, Wizard, of Wizard of Oz. Correct. Big Brother. Uh, 1984. Correct. The Stranded Choir Boy, Jack. Lord of the Flies. Correct. Stanley Kowalski. Uh, uh, a Streetcar Named Desire. Correct. Captain Hook. Uh, Peter, Pan. Peter Pan. Correct. The Puritan, Abigail Williams. Uh, the Crucible. Crucible. Correct. Uriah Heep. Uh, pass. Real Estate Salesman, Ricky Roma. Glengarry Glen Ross. Correct. Antonio, the usurping Duke of Milan. Something Shakespeare. Uh, pass. A Huron scout named Magua. Uh, Last of the Mohicans. Yes. Nice. Uriah Heep. Pass. Antonio, the usurping Duke of Milan. Duke of Venice. No. Incorrect. And that's the buzzer. There's only. One left for me to go back to on that pass. Okay, so now you're in the lead by 20. There are two left on the board, which means you could tie it up with these, Scotty. 30 seconds, take all the time you need, or 
Shout them out and we'll move on to our final challenge. Are you ready? Name the literary works that contain these villains. Here we go. Uriah Heep. Pass. Antonio, the usurping Duke of Milan. Merchant of Venice. Incorrect. Mm -hmm. Uriah Heep. Raising the Sun. Incorrect. We'll leave those 20 points on the board. The only two no one got. Uriah Heep was in David Copperfield. And you're on the right track. Antonio was from The Tempest. Different William Shakespeare work. So here's our scores right now. Auburn is on top by 20 points. And in our next round, that's basically one question. Because each of our questions is worth 20. And we'll have our Mercy Health final challenge right after this. We knew it was going to be close. Not sure anybody predicted it would be one question as we head into this final challenge, but that is where we are as we do this Mercy Health final challenge. The last round of our game. Auburn's on top by 20 points. They have 180. Belvedere North has 160. Whoever comes out on top in this round will be the Season 8 Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl champion. No pressure. Pressure, to be honest, our teams have handled this pressure for the entire season, and they do a fantastic job of it. Um, just a moment quickly to acknowledge, no matter what happens at the end of this, you should all be very proud of yourselves because your parents, who many of them are here tonight, are very proud of you as well. Let's get into our Mercy Health final challenge, shall we? Hands on your buzzers, same rules as round one, other than those points are now 20 per question instead of 10. And again, hands on your buzzers. Um, wait for me to call your name before the answer. Say the answer loudly and clearly, and let's have fun for this final round of season eight. Here we go. Good luck, teams. What element transported in the body by transferrin accumulates in the blood in hemo... Scotty. Iron. Correct. Hemochromatosis, the metal in hemoglobin that binds oxygen. We're tied now. Giuseppe Zangara killed Chicago Mayor Anton Cermak while trying to assassinate what U.S. president-elect in Miami in 1933. Spencer. FDR. That is correct. What empire, which was ruled by the Komnenos and Palaiologos dynasties, was Spencer. The Byzantine. Correct. Governed from Constantinople and was a successor to the Roman Empire. Three in a row for Belvedere North this round. The currently in deployment version six of what network communications protocol defines its namesake addresses as 100... Scotty. IP. Correct. On 128-bit numbers, IP or internet protocol. What state which contains the source of the Murray and Darling Rivers is the most populous in Australia and named after a country in the UK? Scotty. New South Wales. New South Wales, NSW, a roll for Belvedere North. You're up to 260. What author who noted stone walls do not a prison make was a cavalier... Kobe. Loveless. Correct. Who wrote to La Costa going to the wars and to Althea from prison. Auburn's first points of this round. You're at 200. Michael I was the first czar from what royal dynasty? Spencer. Romanov. Correct. Held power for 300 years until it was overthrown by the Bolsheviks. What program, which used the Hanford site and it was headquartered at Oak Ridge? Luis. Manhattan Project. Correct. Established the Los Alamos Laboratory to build the first atomic bomb. What sculptor of the Puritan created the Robert Gould Shaw Memorial in Boston? Spencer. Borglum. Incorrect. Auburn, you could take these points. Senecio. French. Incorrect. Augustus Saint Gaudin. What month whose birthstone? That was Alex. A, that was a mistake. I September. What did you say? It was a mistake. I didn't mean to buzz. September. What did you say? September. September is the answer. <laughs> I, I'm not even going to continue the rest of the question. September is the answer. Um, you had a 1 in 12 chance there. What Central African country and former German colony is home? Spencer. Tanzania. Incorrect. I will finish for Auburn. Is home to the port of Douala and its capital at Yuende. Senecio. Namibia. Incorrect. Cameroon. What cell structure, which contains enzymes called flipases? Senecio. Cell wall. I need to be, you need to be more specific. Uh, sorry, I cannot take that. 
Belvedere North, I will finish for you, can be stabilized by cholesterol and divides the cytoplasm from the outside environment. Spencer. Cell membrane? Cell membrane is correct. And that is the last question of the game. 300 points. It hasn't happened for seven seasons, but Belvedere North Blue Thunder is the new champion for Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Congratulations. Um, you can see, even with your mask on, Scott Spencer, I can see it in your eyes how excited you are. Uh, we are going to take a quick break and come back with our trophy presentations after this. What an exciting end to Season 8. Uh, we're glad you were part of it, but don't go away because we're going to get to meet our contestants in just uh, about two minutes. What a fantastic game. The, the applause practically continued all the way through our commercial break here at the Nordloff Center. Um, it, is it, this is the hardest part of the game because you know if you watch every game we have to say goodbye to a team. It's especially hard when it's in the finale. Um, Auburn, you should be very happy with how you played because we all know how hard it is just to get to one round in, but you made it all the way to the finale and it's very, um, Again, you should be very proud of yourselves. We all know your parents are. You heard them scream, go Knights. That's why. Um, Andrew Hall is here. I mentioned him earlier as our judge today. He actually has a much more important job, and that's handing out some hardware here. So this is our uh, runner-up trophy. Andrew, on, on behalf of Bergstrom, would like to present that to you. Senecio, congratulations. And if you pass that down the line, I have some other stuff for you as well. Um, so our parent company, next to our media group, is giving our winning our, our second place team a $2,500 scholarship for the team to use however they choose. <laughs> Senecio, this is, this is for you. We have witnesses. Don't go running off with that. <laughs> um, and maybe more importantly, um, our friends, I mentioned our friends at Lino's and thank them for participating. They also wanted you to have this as well. We know you didn't get the Top Gun question, but here's a pizza party for you and the team from Lino's. Can't take responsibility. Um, and very quickly, how many of you are seniors? So uh, we thank you for playing. It's been really, it's been a pleasure watching you play. That means everybody who didn't raise their hands, you'll be back here for season nine, right? I hope so. Speaking of being back here, we are going to take a very quick break and we are going to hand out our trophy to this year's season eight champions in Berkshire State Line Quiz Bowl. We'll be right back. We are all still trying to catch our breath from that finale. It came practically down to the wire. Uh, the closest finale finish we have ever had. Congratulations, Belvedere North Blue Thunder, our new champs for season eight on Bergstrom State Line Quiz Bowl. Andrew, yes, I, I don't want to interrupt your applause. One more time. <laughs> Andrew Hall again, would you do the honors with the hardware? Absolutely. Our first place trophy. And while Andrew presents that and passes it, Scotty, if you hand that over to Spencer. By the way, Spencer led the way with the team again with eight correct answers. Nice work, Spencer. Um, first of all, so I, we, uh, we gave a $2,500 scholarship to Auburn. Our first place team gets a $5,000 scholarship from our parent company, Nextar Media Group. There you go. And there, because of the Top Gun question, who got that right? Spencer, right? You hang on to that one. You're in charge of the pizza party. You got witnesses, so don't eat all of that yourself. We okay, have people we'll who know that I gave it to you. Um, but congratulations again, senior send off. How many of you are leaving? So, James, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Captain James for Belvedere North Season 9. And the rest of you guys, please come visit anytime. Uh, we know James's brother, Tom, comes whenever he wants. Yeah, you have a standing invitation, seriously. Come and visit us anytime you want to play the game. Um, it's been a really exciting season. Um, I want to thank you for participating. I also want to thank some people. Um, you know, I'm the one and our contestants are the faces that you get to see, but we have um, more than a dozen people behind the scenes who help out, our production staff, our engineering staff, our sales department. They're here on weekends when we record these games. Um, I can't name everybody because otherwise I would forget names, but I do want to name two people. Um, first, our director, Aaron Rice, who is the only person on our staff who has been here for every single Quiz Bowl game of eight seasons, and our executive producer, Sean Anderson, because um, they both put up with me.
they put up with me and my quirkiness and weirdness sometimes, and also my breaking out into Hamilton songs. Let's end the show before I do a Hamilton, right? Um, again, congratulations to Belvedere North Blue Thunder, our season eight champs. Thank you for being here. Uh, don't forget, next week we have a fun game. Rockford Firefighters take on the Rockford Cops. Uh, could be a good one. Last year was a little bit lopsided. I think this year is a little bit closer of a match. And then after that, we start our Berkshire State Line Quiz Bowl Junior Edition. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again soon. Stay safe. Good job, you guys.